Hi, everybody. I'm Al Roker, the co-host of the Today Show. Welcome to the NBCU Academy. Today, we are going to talk about weather forecasting and on-air presentations. Now, weather forecasts are an essential part of the news business because on any given day, the top news story is also the top weather story, and it could directly impact the highest number of folks who are watching your newscast. Well, today we're going to be looking at how we get the data for a weather forecast, how we translate that data into graphics that you can present, and how to make weather reporting more relevant for your viewers at home. So let's start first how we start our day. Every morning, just after I wake up and, you know, take care of business, I, uh, I check in with our meteorologist, Don Sunikis. Hey, good morning, Al. Who has already been hard at work for several hours getting our forecast ready. He gives me a briefing on the most important weather stories that are happening all across the country on any given day. We're looking for places where the weather could have a significant impact on your viewers so that we can let them know what to expect and how to best prepare. Well, so those tornado watches extend up into Arkansas, Texas to Arkansas. Yeah, uh, yes, they do. The data we use to create the forecast and graphics come from several different sources. Observations from all across the entire planet, along with imagery from satellites in orbit and radars on the ground. They're all sending massive amounts of data to supercomputers located both here in the United States and in Europe. The computers use that information to give us a clear picture of what's happening with the weather right now. Then they use these calculations to figure out what's going to happen with the weather going into the future. We often refer to these forecasts on the air as forecast models and then show them in our graphics each day. Now, here's all this weather data we've been talking about in a graphic presentation. Uh, it's being constantly fed in, in real time, to our weather graphics computer. The computer translates that raw data into images that appear here on our weather maps. We're able to look at the latest images from satellites in orbit. Those images here, as you can see, show us where the cloud cover is currently located. This is really, really critical during hurricane season because the satellites not only show where the hurricane is located, but it also helps estimate its strength by looking at its size and its shape, how well it's organized. Another key element we show every day, radar data. The National Weather Service has a network of more than 150 radars all across the country. These radars send out a radio beam into the storms, detecting where precipitation is located, how heavy it is, and how quickly it's moving. Each radar streams their data into our graphics computer 24-7. This gives us a nearly live look at every place across the country, no matter whether it's raining or snowing or a mix in between. Radars are also able to detect the rotation of tornadoes. So keeping a close eye on this is especially important during severe weather. Detecting a tornado in advance can give folks that critical few minutes they need to get to a safe place before a storm hits. And those models I was mentioning from the US and Europe, well, you can see their, their forecast predictions on this graphic we call the future cast. What we're seeing here is the output from the European model. Areas where the model thinks it's going to get uh, rain, that's shaded in green. Snowy areas in blue and that mixed precipitation in pink. We can start out showing where the rain and snow is going to be today. Then, as time advances, going into the future, we move into tonight, on into tomorrow, and the map moves along with the storm. This gives us the ability to track that storm over the course of several days and show where it's headed and how bad it may be. Now, before the Today Show starts, Don and I go through all these different types of maps and arrange them into a presentation that we advance through. This morning, for example, we talked about our top story, which was a rain and snowstorm out west, and this storm system is going to march its way across the country. We decided to show where that storm was currently located using the radar and satellite data. Then the next thing we showed, where those areas are currently under watches and warnings for this event. Then we used the forecast model to track the storm moving from here to here. And by that time, it's going to really be cranking. Now, how should reporters be making weather reporting more useful and relevant to your viewers? Well, here at the Today Show, we're covering the weather for the entire country. We're looking at the places where it will have the biggest impact on folks' lives for that day. Now, it could be a big snowstorm that'll cripple the Northeast, a hurricane 
heading toward the Gulf Coast, or sometimes a shocking temperature swing where millions of folks who had been enjoying warm spring temperatures suddenly are below freezing. Now, anybody can get these same forecasts and alerts on their phone. But our hope is to give you the bigger picture. Instead of only telling you what's going to happen, we want to convey the magnitude of the events. How does it affect our viewers? It's going to be devastating. Now, in the last few years, I don't need to tell you, we've seen record numbers of hurricanes. There have been unprecedented devastation from wildfires in the West. Our summers have had unrelenting heat waves. The toll these events are taking increase every year, and much of it connected to climate change. We're going beyond the basic forecast and telling our audience why the weather on a given day is remarkable, but we're also making that connection between extreme events and our changing climate. An element of weather reporting that wasn't a factor when I first started in the business. In fact, I'm so old, they didn't even have satellites. They just had a guy up with binoculars looking around. But we knew now are making that, that connection between extreme weather and our climate. In addition to forecasting storms, our team of meteorologists now keep up with what's called climate attribution. Research that gives us confidence to say, for example, yes, that week of torrential rainfall from Hurricane Harvey in the southeastern part of Texas could actually be attributed to climate change. A warmer atmosphere, holding more water vapor, essentially juicing our environment for a high precipitation event. Or reporting on the drought monitor, which once again has parts of California in extreme drought, ripe for another active wildfire season. Now, we have correspondents positioned all around the world, ready to report live from the epicenter of a severe weather event and show firsthand what it's like to be in the path of a hurricane, dodging flames of a wildfire, or in the aftermath of violent tornadoes. When a catastrophic storm strikes, our team in the field, both reporters and crews, showing the devastating impacts these systems can have, both on our landscape and, more importantly, the human toll they take. What it's like as a storm surge rushes in during a dangerous hurricane or the tragedy of losing your home in a wildfire or flood. They also tell the stories of the warriors on the front lines battling to save lives. Now, are you interested in being a weather reporter? Well, here's a couple of things to keep in mind when communicating the weather for local or national reports. First, prioritize the timing of the weather. Is, is it going to rain? What time is it going to rain? When is that hurricane predicted to make landfall? Is it going to affect the morning or afternoon commute? Now, second, focus on the impact of the weather story. Will the rainfall cause uh, flooding, causing danger for that commute? Will a hurricane require mandatory evacuations? Make this news your viewers can use. If they want to know, how is this weather going to impact me? And by the way, just because something's happening across the country doesn't mean it won't affect your viewers eventually or perhaps have a big impact on the air traffic, air traffic systems. You have to make sure you make the weather that's not just in your local area, but all across the country relevant to your viewer. And remember, you're not an app or a phone or a computer. People want to get their weather from people. They want to connect with storytellers. So use your personality when it's appropriate. Get creative with your storytelling. Even when it's 72 and sunny around the country, we can find something to talk about that people will find interesting. We hope this video helps this behind the scenes look at how we put together a weather forecast, teach you some fundamentals of weather reporting and forecasting. For the NBCU Academy, I'm Al Roker. Thanks for watching.